Example 3, we have information on the number of yards rushed and the number of touchdowns for the top 20 rushing yard leaders in the 2012 NFL regular season. So this would be another case where there is the potential for a cause and effect relationship. Um, the more yards you rush, the more likely you are to, in those yards, to score a touchdown. Um, so we're going to be looking at a correlation uh, and then regression model, which again doesn't prove cause and effect. But if we were able to determine that there's a correlation, then it might be worth doing more research into this to see is there a direct cause and effect relationship and how that affects players' performance, touchdowns per game, things like that. So we want to start off by calculating the correlation statistic. which in this case is 0 0.5899 or 0 0.59 if we round that. So the correlation coefficient is 0 0.59, meaning these variables share a and again, it's kind of close to 0 0.6, 0 0.7. It's closer, closer to 0 than the 1, but we could still say maybe a moderately strong. In this case, positive linear association. We'll test the claim that these two populations share an association, share a positive linear association. by testing the following hypotheses. So the null hypothesis that our slope is equal to 0, and the alternative hypothesis that our slope is greater than 0, since again, our correlation coefficient is positive. So going back to that edit screen, we can again update the statement for our alternative hypothesis to test the slope. And since we might need it next to save ourselves a step, we can go ahead and save our residuals. So if we click compute, in this case, we get a p-value of 0 0.0062, which in this case is less than the value for alpha, which was 0 0.1 in this case. So we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the slope is greater than zero. So we're saying there is sufficient evidence to conclude that these two populations share a positive linear association. So even though the correlation statistic in this case was a little low, in part because we have a larger sample in this case, there is enough evidence to support that conclusion of an association. Next, we'll test the claim that our residuals come from a normally distributed population. by testing the following hypotheses. So just for time's sake, I'm not going to retype those same hypotheses. But in a write-up for an exam, that's something that you would want to include. So we already have our residuals saved. So we can select goodness of fit and normality test and assess the normality of our residuals. In this case, we get a p-value of 0 0.9099, which is greater than our value for alpha, which is 0 0.1. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that our residuals come from a normally distributed population. So and again, in this case, since both conditions are met, our linear model, which I closed, so I'll open that back up. So 
So our linear model, which is y equals 0 0.04, plus 0.007x is valid and can be used to make predictions, to make reliable predictions about future or unknown values. So what we're saying in this case is there is an association between yards rushed and touchdowns scored. So an NFL player could use this information, use this model to predict if they say they have an idea of how many yards they might rush in a coming year, use that predict to predict how many touchdowns they how many touchdowns they can be likely to score. So one last example, checking for an association between PlayStation 3 games sold and the number of cats and dogs adopted from Paws Chicago. Again, very likely, unlikely to be a cause and effect relationship here, but we can still explore this association and see if a linear, val linear model is. So we can first calculate our correlation statistic. which in this case would be 0 0.987. So we have a very strong positive correlation. So the correlation coefficient of 0 0.987. So these two variables share a very strong positive linear association. We will test the claim that the two populations share a positive linear association by testing the following hypotheses. So again, the null hypothesis that the slope is zero, the alternative hypothesis that in this case our slope is greater than zero based off that correlation statistic. So we can go back, update our alternative hypothesis, and since it's likely that we'll need it, we'll go ahead and select, select Save Residuals. In this case, we get a p-value of 0 0.0017, which is less than or equal to our value for alpha, which in this case was 0.05. So we reject the null hypothesis. And conclude that our slope is greater than 0. So we're saying there is sufficient evidence to conclude that these two populations share a positive linear correlation or association. Next, we'll test the claim that the residuals are normally distributed or come from a normally distributed population. By testing the following hypotheses. So again, you would want to include those hypotheses. Just for time's sake, I'm going to skip over that step here. I already saved my residuals, so I can go to goodness of fit, normality test and test that claim about the residuals. In this case, I get a p-value of 0 0.8803. That's greater than our value for alpha, which is 0 0.05. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that our residuals come from a normally distributed population. Again, if we came to the opposite conclusion, if we concluded they came from a non-normal population, the conditions would fail. We wouldn't use our model. But in this case, since both conditions are met, there is a linear, core, a linear association. The residuals do come from a normal distribution. Our linear model 
which in this case is y equals 882.7. plus 235.7 is valid and can be used to make accurate predictions about future or unknown values. So again, two hypothesis tests and a calculation of a, a simple, relatively simple sample statistic to come to the conclusion that now our linear model is valid, and then subsequent questions could then be asked about predicting some of those future unknown values. So this data only goes up to 2011, so we could use it as a model to predict what's going to happen in a coming year. One important idea to keep in mind, though, this whole process of constructing linear models is great and incredibly helpful, but these models also need to be continuously updated. So this data is for 2007 to 2011. At the time I collected that, that was pretty recent. But as we start to get into the future, once we get significantly far away from 2011, this data may not be as accurate of a picture anymore. So we need to go back to those sources, update with new data, construct a new model to see if things have changed, if that association still exists or not. So models are great, but only for a relatively limited amount of time. There's something that need to be updated yearly in some business applications, maybe more like monthly. Um, so always this kind of continual process of gathering new data to make sure you're dealing with the best possible model that's going to give you the best predictions and best answers.